and welcome to St. John News. Um, today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter and our presider is Father Ethan. Let us please stand and join in singing Alleluia number one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. It's so good to be with you. The, the blessings, the grace of Easter are so much, they're so big, uh, that we can't, the, the church gives us more than just one day, the church actually gives us eight days to celebrate Easter Sunday. So this is actually the second Sunday of Easter, but it's still Easter Sunday. In a special way, we're also remembering and recognizing Divine Mercy Sunday. So we're going to hear about Thomas and his God's mercy for Thomas and God's mercy for all of us, how he continues to pour his blessings out. And then today, in a special way, we are also celebrating a baptism. And so this is part of the Easter season uh, this is the, re the new life that we've been given in Christ, especially in the baptism. So we're going to begin uh, our celebration uh, with a few questions. And so to our, God, to our parents and godparents here, this is Paula and Brian Pena. And so we're so uh, happy to have you here today. And we're also going to be celebrating the baptism for Leah Pena. Where is Leah? All right. And so... Today, the, this joy has brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gift of your child and to celebrate a new birth in the waters of baptism. And so this community rejoices with you. And so as we prepare ourselves to participate in this celebration, we also renew our commitment to the Lord and his people. And so I ask you, what name have you given your child? Leah Therese. And what do you ask of God's church for Leia Therese? Baptism. All right. So in asking for baptism for your child, you are undertaking the responsibility of raising her in the faith so that keeping God's commandments, she may love the Lord and her neighbor as Christ taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? We do. And so to the godparents, where are the godparents? Okay. So are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty? Yes. yes. Okay. Leah, Leah Therese, the Church of God receives you with great joy, and in her name I sign you with the sign of the cross of Christ our Savior. And now I invite your parents and godparents to do the same. And I invite your brothers and sister to do the same thing too, okay? <laughs> 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 and
And then mindful of our own baptism, uh, we're also mindful that sometimes we do fall short. Uh, we sin, we say things that we don't really mean. And so as we prepare to enter into these sacred mysteries, let us all acknowledge our shortcomings and ask God for his mercy and forgiveness as we say, I confess. Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. But they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, this is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, and although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have belief. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this second Sunday of Easter helps us to receive and to process there's so much happening with the grace of easter there's so, such grace that's being shared through the resurrection it's hard for us sometimes to receive it so it was hard for thomas to receive it as well jesus had been raised from the dead a week earlier and still thomas is resisting he's saying i'm not going to believe he says, and he's putting expectations, and he's putting a certain way of, of being. He says, well, I'm only going to believe. And remember, these were the, the apostles, the disciples. They had seen the risen Lord, and they were telling Thomas. And Thomas says, well, unless, unless I see, unless I put my finger in his wounds and in my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe. Could you imagine? I mean, putting that kind of expectation. Talk about pride telling Jesus how he's got to reveal himself, right? But Jesus is merciful. He understands what he's dealing with, who he's dealing with. He understands our human weakness and our, the corruption that, that we have. And so in his patience, he comes back on the second Sunday of Easter, a week later. That's, that's today. He comes back. He says, okay, Thomas, come here. Let me see your, your finger. Put your finger right here. Put your side, your hand right here in my side. And 
Thomas, almost ashamed, he says, my Lord and my God. So he's come to believe. And Jesus doesn't let it go. He says, have you come to believe because you've seen? Well, blessed are those who haven't seen and have believed. Right? But there's just something about us that we want it our way. Oh, my gosh. I see something coming across here. What is this? I, I need to hear. What, what do you have right here in your hand? A donut. Is that a donut? <laughs> what kind of donut is that? It's sprinkles. Ooh. Well, let's, all right, let's go with this one then. All right. What kind of donuts are our favorite donuts? What's your favorite donut? Is it the sprinkle? Yeah. Anybody else? What's your favorite donut? Here, come. Chocolate sprinkle donut. Okay, not just chocolate? No, but it has the sprinkles too. Okay. Anybody else? How about your favorite donuts over here? What's your favorite donut? Chocolate. Chocolate, yeah. How about you? Do you like donuts? Jelly filled. Jelly filled. Ooh, jelly filled. Is that yours too? Jellies. <laughs> Jellies. Awesome. So I know I could go around and we all have our favorite donuts or maybe if we're, well, it's lunch over, right? So we can eat, eat all the donuts you want. So we can have it our way. I was thinking earlier today, does anybody here like Burger King? Yeah? What's your favorite thing from Burger King? Yeah, what's your favorite thing? I like the Whopper. The Whopper? And how do you like your Whopper? Regular, just everything on it. Everything on it. Yeah. But that's the great thing about Burger King, too. And the Whoppers, right? You can have it your way. <laughs> However you want it. However you want it. That sounds so nice, isn't it? Whatever you want. You want cheese or no cheese, lettuce or no lettuce. With our donuts, do we want sprinkles or no sprinkles? Jelly, no jelly. You get it your way. Does anybody here like Netflix or Disney Plus? Maybe? Yeah? Who... Who has the, who sets up Netflix at home? Who's? Probably, yeah, I do it. Yeah? I gotta handle all the tech stuff. Okay, good. <laughs> but also? I tend to be old school and I still watch network TV, everyone, NBC. I'm old school TV, <laughs> but I am the remote person. You're the remote person. Oh, oh. yeah, no. So they, you control they, the remote. TV's my jam, yeah, come Okay. On. Yeah. Do, you, do you have your own profile on Netflix, do you guys? You do? Yeah. Yeah? Does it have, like, your own selections? Yeah. Yeah? How about for, for you? Do you have your own? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does, I think everybody here probably has your own, like, profile, right? Yeah. And isn't it amazing you go on there and it, it knows what we like? That's the amazing thing. Like, network TV is cool and you get the remote, but then you go to Netflix or you go to Disney Plus and it just has, like, the 98% guarantee you're, we're gonna, you're going to like this. Right? And if it's a bad match, maybe it's like 85%. We're 85% sure you're going to like this. Right? But that's how it is. We get it our way. This is what you like. It feels so good. Man. You can get into your cars. You get your own preset. Right? Whoever drives the car, you hit your button. And it adjusts the mirrors and the seat and the heat and all the presets. It's amazing. Right? Or Spotify. You get your own Spotify channel. You can listen to whatever you want. It's your, it's your jam. Those are your jams. <laughs> right? So when we're talking about Easter, we're talking about Jesus and the resurrection, I hate to break it to you, but it's not our way. Jesus isn't doing it our way. He's not doing it to make us happy or to please us. He didn't, you know, he was patient with Thomas, but he says, okay, Thomas, Come on, dude. You got training wheels. Let's, let's, I want your faith to get up and going. It's not about just what you want. It's not about your way. Right? And so, so that's actually, we've been reflecting on blessed, broken, given. That's what happens to Jesus on the cross. That's not what the disciples wanted. They did not want to see Jesus die on the cross. They were not expecting him to. That was not their preset. Their preset idea of the Messiah was someone that's going to come in and kick all the Romans out, right? And to take back over, to be the conqueror, the triumphant. Israel is great again. But that wasn't the way that Jesus came. No, he came humble. 
soft, easy, blessed, broken, given. That's what Jesus speaks about in the liturgy, in the Eucharist. We're going to hear those words again and again if you listen. Blessed, broken. Jesus was broken. Not because he needed to be broken. He's God. But in our humanity, sin needed to be broken. Our own selfishness, our own ego needs to be broken where we want things our way. I was sharing earlier, I got a phone call. No, I was calling a friend on Friday. Okay? I was calling a friend and I wanted them to answer and they didn't answer. And then they sent me a text message. Right? And maybe some of you can relate to my experience I'm sharing here. But they sent a text message that says, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm with family right now. I'm occupied. I, I can't talk right now, but I'll call you later. Okay, that was Friday. <laughs> All right. So I was thinking, okay, well, I'm going to get a phone call later on Friday. That phone call never came. But the phone call came yesterday. But I was in confessions. I was hearing confessions, and so I couldn't answer the phone. So I, I waited, and then I called them back right after confessions. I thought, okay, great. It's only maybe a half an hour. 45 minutes later, I'm going to call, and then they'll answer, and we can catch up. And then I call, and then I didn't even get a personal message. Oh, I'm so sorry, Father Ethan. I can't talk, but let's talk later. I got the automatic reply. It was, I can't talk right now, but you can text. I said, well, I don't want to text. If I wanted to text, I would have texted you. I'm calling you. Why aren't you calling me back? Why aren't you answering my phone? So I, I refused to text. And I refused to, to call back. I'm waiting for them to call me back. So it's Sunday and I still haven't received the phone call. <laughs> so I was talking with another friend earlier this morning. They said, well, you should probably just text. That's what they said. Just text. So I started off with a text. I said, all right. Well, let me celebrate Mass first, and then maybe later today I'll text. <laughs> but that's our humanity. That's what we struggle with. That's our preset. That's our go-to. I want it my way. And we're wrestling. We're struggling. We're dying to ourselves. That's what we're celebrating in this baptism. That we die to ourselves. We're dying in Christ. So Leah, in just a few moments, you are going to go into the waters with Christ. And you're going to come back out with a new life. Right? And it's not just the old way. It's not just our own little social circle on TikTok or on Facebook. Right? Instagram, if, if somebody says something to us that we don't like, we can unfriend them. Get away from me. I'm cutting you out of my circle. This is my little circle that I like. People that affirm me and give me the things that I like and tell me how good I am. But that's not how it is when we're baptized into Christ. We're baptized into the body of Christ. That's everybody. We're all baptized into that. And there may be people that we don't understand or they're, they're not fulfilling our expectations. They're not giving us what we want. So we continue every day. We continually die to ourselves. We die in Christ so that we could be raised in Christ to a new life. This is the resurrection. This is the new way. Jesus, I trust in you. This is the divine mercy because sometimes we don't really trust. Jesus, really? Are you really going to raise from the dead? Jesus, can I really trust you? Can I let go of the wheel? Can I turn my, my presets over to you? Is it going to turn out? Can I surrender my control? If I don't hear back from somebody immediately or if somebody's not doing things the way I want them to do it. Jesus, I trust in you. That's the prayer that Jesus gave St. Faustina for all of us in God's divine mercy. So we have this, this image here on this divine mercy Sunday which helps to remind us of that. And it's okay to let go. It's okay to surrender, even if we don't understand what it means or what our lives will look like. 
Maybe God has a better plan than we could have imagined. Maybe God has a better way than our way. You look at the world, it's a whole bunch of people doing things my way. But in the prayer that we pray, our Father, we pray that His kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. So I invite us to all maybe just pause for 30 seconds and we just ask Jesus to help us. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you and in your way. Invite us to stand and trusting in God's love for us, trusting in God's way, I invite us to all renew our baptismal promises. And so through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now I invite us to renew our, the promises of our holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan. Remember, the father of lies, the father of pride, and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth, by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. And we have gathered here in prayer to celebrate the mystery of our salvation. So let us now bring all our requests to God our Father, who is always open to answering our needs. For the church, that through the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit, we may grow in our trust of the risen Christ, who offers forgiveness and hope for the future, we pray. For all government leaders and civil authorities, that the Holy Spirit may guide them in their decision making, and that hatred, violence, and conflicts may cease, we pray. For our neophytes, those newly joined to Christ through baptism, those called to him through the sacraments of initiation, may their witness of new life in God bring fresh enthusiasm and joy to every Christian, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we who have received Christ's mercy and forgiveness in our lives may in turn be merciful and forgiving towards others, we pray. Lord, hear our For those who struggle with their faith, may they be inspired by St. Thomas' doubts and subsequent faith in the risen Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our For the sick and the homebound, and for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, including Jaden Mitzkis, Diane McNall, and, and Dan Young, that the risen Lord may dispel their darkness. And for those gone before us in death, including Victoria Asuncion, Alexander Ram, Jesus Amador Lasarte, Ana Maria Polido, J.B. Yap, and Carlos Montana, that they and all sleep 
in Christ may enjoy light, happiness, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our parish, we pray. And for all our needs and intentions that we now recall in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for Leah, uh, for her new birth and baptism, and for all who have been baptized, especially during this Easter season, that through the radiant divine mystery of your death and resurrection, they may be joined to your holy church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Father in heaven, you are the source of life, and you have sent your Son into the world that we may have that life in abundance. Help us to live so that we may come to the abundance of that life in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we're seated, I ask our ushers to hold off for the preparation of the gifts as we continue. You may be seated. As we continue with the baptism of Leah at this moment. And I invite us all to ask for the saints in heaven, those who've gone forward in faith, uh, to intercede for Leah and all the baptized. And so the response will be, pray for us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, St. Michael, Holy Angels of God, St. John the Baptist, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Andrew, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Francis, St. Clair, St. John Eudes, St. Therese, all holy men and women, saints of God. All right. And so now I'm going to give a, I'm going to ask our, one of our servers to come forward to help me. And now we have a special prayer of exorcism and there will be an anointing before the baptism. Almighty, ever-living God, who sent your Son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, and bring the human race rescued from darkness into the marvelous kingdom of your light, we humbly beseech you to free this child, Leah, from original sin, to make her the temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in her through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I ask for the oil of catechumens. Okay. And I'm going to make the sign of the cross on her chest. Okay. And we're giving her a, an anointing here to strengthen her. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you. As a sign of this, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the same Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we pray that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on this child by water and the Holy Spirit. Okay, and so now, is it your will, Brian and Paula, that Leah should receive baptism in the faith of the church, which we have all professed with you? It is. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Leah, you ready? Okay. Come on.
Leah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we got her really good. <laughs> She's awake for sure. Okay. Okay. Could you put the quiz up? Okay. All right. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, Leah given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and joined you to his people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, so that you may remain as a member of Christ, priest, prophet, and king unto eternal life. Leah, you have become a new creation and you have been clothed in Christ. And so may the white garment that you are wearing be a sign to you of your Christian dignity and with your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring it unstained into eternal life. Amen. Now we're going to have uh, the lighting of the candle. Receive the light of Christ. And so with the godparents, uh, Tiffany, EJ, Melanie, and Elmira, and Ray, and Roy, uh, you're there to continue to walk with Leah and to guide her on this journey of faith. And now I'm going to give the Ephatha. I'm going to open her, her lips and her ears so that she could hear the word of God and that she could proclaim it. May the Lord Jesus, who made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, grant that you may soon receive his word with your ears and profess the faith with your lips to the glory and praise of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And let's give Leah and her family another round of applause. <laughs> and we'll continue on with the preparation of our altar. And so I invite the ushers to continue forth now. As we prepare our table, let us join in singing, We Walk by Faith.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confessing, by the confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with their angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, 
and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with dear blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Thomas, with St. John Eudes and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us join our communion hymn, O Sons and Daughters.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have just a few short announcements. Uh, we do have our quarterly food and clothing drive. That's today. It's till 2 p.m. in Lassen parking lot. So if you have any usable um, clothing donations, St. Vincent de Paul truck will be there. And that's shoes, linens, any small appliances. And we also have a food donation. So non-perishable items such as fruits, vegetables, meats, or soups that are canned. Uh, we really appreciate all your support. Those food donations go to Catholic Charities. We also have our quarterly blood drive. That's going to be next Sunday. That'll be from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can go to redcross.org and use our sponsor code, St. John Youths, to sign up. They also have a few open uh, walk-in appointments if you get there early. And then we do have our ESL uh, English as Second Language classes that are offered every Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon. That's in room AB of our grill hall. We have three different levels of, prof <laughs> let me see if I can say that word, uh, proficiency taught. And uh, so it's open to everyone. So it's a great opportunity if you have family or friends, uh, if you'd like to take those classes. And then finally, we have our school gala. That's our annual gala that's going to be on April 20th at Castaways in Burbank. There will be dinner, dancing, there's casino tables, an open bar, and more. Tickets are selling fast, so if you're interested, we have a table set up in our plaza so you can find out more information or purchase your tickets today. Uh, let's give a round of applause once again to Leah and her family. And to, to all of our newly baptized and confirmed in our Catholic faith. And we ask our Blessed Mother Mary uh, to help us continuing to surrender, to trust in God's will for our lives, to trust in God's love as we pray. Hail Mary. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And our closing is, joyful, joyful, we adore you.